Princess Style and Company back with another Ruby Talks. We are so excited about this one because we're going to talk about the Remnant Gods, things we have been introduced to only season six. Again, if you have not watched season six, spoilers, but I won't say not to watch this because this is going to be really cool, I think. We have some great if things to talk want about. To be spoiled. Rotten. Oh. I'm sorry. That was terrible. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, we also have our disembodied sister voice with us today because she thought this would be really cool to talk about. You say sister voice like it's from a sister channel. She doesn't have her own channel. Welcome, disembodied girl voice. Oh, oh thank you for having me. So pleased to be here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is going to be weird, but we'll work with it. I have my little index card and notes will? here. And we also even have some uh, book talk to do. Yay. Anyway, if you're not into that nerdy stuff, this is probably the wrong video for you so to watch. You but if you read. love talking about lore and what it means, keep watching. All right, let's get into point number one. The Remnant Gods. As the title Who would suggest. Who are they? What are they? <laughs> They're light Why colored. are they? Okay, I think you're thinking about this. Um... I think I'm quoting Infinity Wars is what I'm doing. I think you're getting triggered. That's what you're doing. <laughs> All right. The purple one did not. <gasps> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! The purple one who wipes out out of the world. Oh wow! Wow! They brought balance. Oh my gosh! She just blew my mind. He brought. <laughs> Sorry, we're geeking out. Uh, okay, the remnant gods. We have the older one, and we have the younger one. Weird that one of them existed first. I'm just gonna say that. We're gonna get into that. So the older god is the god of light. It's very shiny. Did you just say it like that? I don't know. I'm just saying it. And then the god of uh, darkness. And destruction. Hmm. So uh, we find out from Crow, assuming this is true, that they created mankind together. One of the few things they made together. Don't ask me how the God of Destruction can create few something. Few things. The only things they made together. It was a thing they could agree upon. Agree. Because they were always fighting with each other. So, uh, let, well, let's back up a little bit. So there was the God of Light. He kind of started everything by creating it. Just went creating stuff everywhere. Humans. Uh, well, not humans, but animals, birds, the world. Yes. The whole spiel. And the god of darkness was kind of jealous, and he just, he's like, what is the point of creating stuff? So he made the creatures he's of so Grimm. so much funny to break the Legos. <laughs> he made the creatures of Grimm, and he, they would destroy everything his brother made. Um, which is interesting, because the creatures of Grimm now, as we know, attack things made by man, and man primarily, and don't really attack other stuff. Like animals or just plain nature. Instead, they live in nature and pretty much ignore animals. If you've watched the Grim World Around video, if you haven't, I recommend watching that because I'm not explaining everything here. Also, they don't need to eat. So, so something changed. We're going to get into that. So, when they made man together, they decided to give him half, I guess, light stuff and half destruction stuff, but I think the God of Light must have cheated a little bit because he also apparently gave them a conscience. Or that comes from something else, but... And the other guy gave them magic. Yeah. So they also gave them the four relics. Two Later from on, the God though, of Light, two different. from the God of Darkness. Now, it's not confirmed exactly which is which, but we have a pretty good guess that Wait, the relic... Second second. The relic of creativity and the relic of knowledge are from the god of light because we know Jin said the god of light made her, and creativity is the only other one that makes sense for him. 
while um, destruction, the relic of destruction, are, is obviously from the god of darkness, and the relic of choice, presumably, is also from him. He also, we know, he gave mankind the ability to perform magic. Suspicious. So then why wasn't the god of darkness there when the god of light gave Ozpin, like the whole spiel about the relics? Well, the relics were already there. The god of light was just showing them to him. I guess giving them into his care or... I don't know if those are actually supposed to be the relics or just kind of pictures of them. Okay. So, yeah. That's the gifts they gave mankind. And they also gave them the ability to choose between one or the other. And this is going to bring us to a bit of a problem. The gods are at war. I mean, they constantly were arguing, bickering, and fighting over who would have more control. With they acted people. like children. Acting like a pair of squabbling children. Um, and so we have this idea of light versus dark in the show. And this idea of balance. Uh, also, something that you could... Uh, harken back to the Star Wars uh, original movies. They're always talking about the balance of the dark side of the Force and the light side of the Force. Well, I thought that was more the prequels. Well, <coughs> I've heard it theorized that Anakin, he, the prophecy surrounding him was that he would bring balance to the Force, and it was said that he did because he made the dark side just as powerful as the light side. So obviously... That uh, type of dualism seems to prioritize balance more than one side winning over the other. Yeah. And I have heard um, other YouTubers who are discussing this show um, discuss that idea and thinking that the lines between good and bad, as far as these gods are concerned, are pretty blurred, which... Well, well, we have more to get into to that, but I want to discuss this idea of balance just for a second. Is balance even possible between these two gods? One of them's older. In the episode where we see the most of them, episode three, the god of darkness kind of gets super ticked emo at his brother. He's the emo god. He is the most emo god I've ever seen. And he's oh, like, I see goodness. these rules now work ever in your favor. And the God of Light is just basically like, really? Boy. He's like, look, I didn't come here Boy. to control you. Only you kind of know he did. You kind of know he did. He's kind of lying. He's kind of the honest I guess he's God. not the God of Truth, you know what I'm saying? Uh, well, this God changes his mind at the drop of a hat anyway, though. Yeah, they change so. their mind. Like a girl changes. Okay, stop. Sorry. So, uh. But it's like, oh, well, I'll bring Ozpin to life. And oh, no, he's gone. And what the ironic thing is that the god of destruction is the one bringing him to life. And the god of life is the one killing him. Which gives the idea that these gods are not entirely independent of each other. Which they actually say. It's like, we both have sway in both. But if that's so, why are they at war? Because, why do they fight with each other? Well, I think because one chose a different path than the other. One wants, they both seem to want control. Or does the god of light just want balance? Balance And the god of destruction want more? I mean, he seems kind of like he's got a temper. I mean, I feel like in that whole scene, you could have like made an animation that substituted Ozpin for them just fighting on e and pulling on I each mean, end of a teddy bear. And if it had split in half and each got half, I think the god of light would have been fine with that. He should have just been half dead and half alive. Oh, well. So a ghost? Uh, compromise. You know what? Salem probably still would have been okay with it. That's the weird part. Uh, uh, I mean, what else is she now? Huh. That's a weird thought. The weird thoughts and the realities of The weird, weird thought. People. Well, actually, that's a good thought, though. I mean, Salem fell in... Okay, she was thrown into the pool of eternal life. The fountain of youth. You know, and... As a punishment, interestingly enough, which we talk a little bit more about uh, in our character character, uh, our video. character videos. Yes. Um, so check that out. But um, she fell, she jumped into the pool of darkness thinking it would undo it. But what it did instead was meld the two together so she's now an eternal being of destruction. 
not just a human in, being. You know, if those situations had been reversed, I feel like the effects would have actually been different because I think it has a lot to do with your mindset when it happens. I agree. Why do you say that? Well, honestly, it was her choice. To embrace the darkness by jumping into the pool of destruction. I mean, she already had a dark... And you would not her, do that unless you were seriously messed up or in a seriously bad position that would mess you up. Well, she wanted to die. Yeah. Yeah. So I think if the roles were reversed, if she was thrown into the pool of destruction but somehow didn't die, and then went to the pool of light to... I'd... I don't know why she would go into the pool of light after that. You Maybe to see if it would heal her. I think that the pool of light would have become odious to her. I mean, it doesn't seem like the God of Destruction really tolerates What I, what I really meant by light. that, though, was that if she had went into the pool of eternal life, like, not by force, but like, hey, so you need to fix your mess, and uh, I'm not going to let you die until you... Fix Wait, your on mess. that note, is oh. there really balance? You know. We just found out in episode eight that the silver eyes come from the god of light. But the problem with this is the god of destruction's powers may destroy, but they don't destroy all in one poof. They don't have an instantaneous effect. They have to fight for it. While the god of light just can give this power that immediately neutralizes the God Destruction's powers, implying he really is more powerful than him. Yeah, there really isn't a balance. Unless, as some people theorize, there is a counter-destructive force. We've seen no evidence of this, though. Well, Supposedly, the Grim are the counter-force, but Grim are not as powerful as the Silver Eyes. They can be only as powerful as their creator. So is the younger brother truly equal? And do we still have this idea of Light being older and being there first, if there is an older and younger brother. Now you may ask, why is this a problem and why does this matter? This is a problem and it does matter because polytheism, polytheism, its basic premise or foundation is that gods are territorial. To take Greek mythology for an example, or Egyptian mythology, there's a god of the sun, there's a god of the moon. There's a god of day, there's a god of night, there's a god of hunting, there's a god of harvest, there's a god of the sky, there's a god of the sea, there's a god of death, there's a god of life, there's a god of love, there's a god of revenge. There's a god for like literally everything. There's a god of birth and there's and a god of death. Even beyond gods, there's minor spirits of trees, plants, clouds, water, and they all have a domain. Every river... Every well, everything has its own protective deity because it is all about territory. Monotheism, by contrast... The phone is ringing. There's an animal in trouble. Oh, well. Uh, monotheism, by contrast, as I was saying, it has the premise that there is one power, one deity, that controls all these things. It doesn't matter what they are. However, it's important to note that there's still the question of good and evil, even with monotheism, and who controls what. But we're, for now, we're sticking to domain. Now, even in Greek and Egyptian and uh, any other polytheism you will find, there's always a top dog. It could be Zeus, it could be Ra, it could be Odin, there's Mayan gods. We should have unplugged that. Sorry. Uh, people always call you at the worst times, don't they? We're getting off topic. I'm sorry, it's distracting. What was I saying? Odin. That top dogs of the gods. Mayans. Shiva. That's like more Buddhism, Hinduism type thing. All that fun, weird, creepy stuff. Yeah. Human sacrifices not cool. Uh -huh. You might even be familiar with Jupiter as the king of the gods. If you've like know any astronomy or read like old older literature, you'll see references to that all the time, or to Jove, all this stuff. There's always a top dog, and so even when there's only two, as in some religions there is only two gods, there's always one that's applied to be more powerful or older, in some way, or one that humans tend to like more. Usually the light one. I mean, like, you'd be hard-pressed to find a religion that thinks the night 
or the darkness is better. Hmm. Usually there's even like stories about reconciling with it in some way. If you know any Norse mythology, you know that Loki, that trickster god, is always getting into trouble and having to get judged or reconciled in some weird way to the other gods. And he represents darkness a lot. I mean, he even killed the god of goodness and stuff. Anyway, this is not a Norse mythology video, but you get see what I'm getting at. There's always like this hierarchy and there's usually war within that hierarchy for control. Remnant gods are no exception. But there's a problem with that, is there not? You can't be a truly good god if you're a truly selfish god. You can't have balance if one is more powerful. You can't. It's impossible. What do you do with that? That kind of makes the whole balance message not make any sense. All right, and along that line, let's get to are polytheistic gods good or evil? Because that kind of fits in. If it's all about territory, is it really about goodness or evil? Like kind of what Elizabeth just said, can you be a truly good god if you're selfish and territorial? Exactly. Truth is, you can and can you expect people to follow you as said god? Greek mythology is full of lots of times Zeus judged people, not for necessarily doing what you would say is wrong, but for not doing what he wanted. If you've read the Iliad, it's full of gods just smacking mortals around, basically. The Odyssey, even more so. Even the Aeneid, it's all the same. It can be hard to say who was really right and who was really wrong because it just becomes a matter of who can pack the biggest punch, which is a point I wanted to bring up. Polytheism relies on fear of divine power more than unbelief in divine holiness as a reason to obey them. In the world of Remnant, was Salem wrong to want what she wanted or was she just stupid to oppose the gods? I mean... She still, even after they punished her, she was still convinced the problem was not that they were wise and not that they were good, but that they were too powerful. And even as Jin says, she realized they were fallible and she could manipulate them. Hmm. Way too easily, I might add. It's like manipulating a child. Two children. Two children. Fighting over it's like, this woman came here to convince you to bring her dead boyfriend back to life because she wants to control you. It couldn't just be that I didn't give her a satisfactory answer and totally blew her off when I was literally standing in front of the pool of immortality and it was like the snap of a fingers <laughs> to bring him back. But no, I guess I just can't bother to explain. Violence! Oh, brother. You just don't understand life and death, Salem. And then he immediately turned around and was like, all right, so I know that I said that you're dead girlfriend. I mean, she's not dead, but your girlfriend that you can't bring you back because that would upset the balance. But, I just, but hey, I decided that if I reincarnate you, that makes it okay. So you're going back. Because if I think it's a good it's idea. It's still his spirit. It's still his soul. Then it's soul. okay. What the heck? But as we've seen, did did that really help anything? No. It made everything worse. Everything the remnant gods have done concerning made Salem and Ozpin has been just worse. In fact, just bringing Ozpin back to life in the first place and leaving it at that would have messed things up way less than what they actually did. If they just left him dead. Just and like, left... oh yeah, give the crazy woman an excuse to go off the deep end. So is there only one way, like in one their afterlife? Defense. In their defense. In their, in their if they had done it once, when he actually died of old age, she probably would have been like, well, shoot, worked one time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Salem would have learned. Unless she died first. We could hope. Oh, that's <laughs> dark. And then Ospin would have been like, what should I do? Should I bring her back or should I just accept fate? And knowing him, the god probably would just be like, no. And he would be like, okay. That's just, I, I. Yeah. Okay, we're in, at the end of part one now. Ooh. So in part two, we're going to get a little bit more into this and um, the problems with these gods and uh, what the solution is probably going to have to be. So, if you watched, thank you. Watch the next part, and we'll see you then. Bye.
Goodbye.